Hey there Aquarius, welcome to this 2021-2022 year end review. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. So as always, you guys keep in mind that this is a general reading, so please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Um, also, it's a bit windy today, so um, hopefully that doesn't blow my cards away, but it's probably going to cause a bit of noise interference other than the, the chickens and the roosters, but anyway, keep that in mind. Um, so this is a general reading, right? Take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Um, it is recommended that you watch this for your sun, moon, or rising. Your sun, moon, and rising signs will be the most, most likely the most accurate or uh, um, resonant for you with your rising sign being at the top of that list. But keep in mind that um, with this series of readings that I've done here for the collective, it is intended for you to be able to watch this for any placement that you have. So wherever you may have any sort of... Um, uh, Aquarius energy or whatever planets you may have in Aquarius if you want to watch it from that point of view of the realm of that planet then you are more than welcome to do so but as always Sun Moon and Rising is most likely going to be the most accurate with the rising sign at the top of the list so I have two tarot decks here and I'm going to use one tarot deck to look at what the year of 2021 has been like for you um, get some year-end wrapping up the year messages in terms of that and then we're going to move forward into another deck, and I'm going to look at what 2022 is going to be potentially looking like for you. And then I will close out the reading with Oracle Guidance from the Earth Warriors Oracle. Yeah? All right, Aquarius, let's dive into this here. So, three shuffles for you, Aquarius, and let's look at the year of 2021. What has the year of 2021 been like for you? Now, already, you guys, I mean, I'm at the end of the of the list here, right? Uh, Aquarius and Pisces are the last two. Um, but the general theme for the whole collective for this year has been, I'm hearing lack mentality, but changing, changing your view in terms of lack mentality. This is your last shuffle. This is three. Um, but there's also been an energy of, like, changing your alignment letting go of things that no longer serve you okay there's been a big collective shift or a big collective push i just heard in terms of no longer working for or working towards things or working with situations or people or circumstances that no longer serve you there's been a big push for that for a long time and the year of 2021 for the collective feels like it's been that moment where the universe could really come in and push this forward all right uh, lack mentality is something that keeps coming up. Maybe this is for you specifically, Aquarius. There was a level of lack mentality that you, uh, I'm hearing that you felt safe in, that you allowed yourself to believe in or you allowed yourself to sink into because it was safer. Um, there's something about societal standards or the people around you or... Um, fitting in to the tribe to the vibe to the collective or whatnot whatever by accepting some sort of limitation some sort of limited lack mentality type focus and that it feels like and maybe this is for you specifically aquarius um and it feels like there has been a push here to get you out of that to to, to i want to say sort of leave some things behind but it's not sort of we're actually leaving a lot of things behind on a grand scale that no longer serve us right that are no longer in alignment with us, that are no longer resonate, that no longer resonate for us. And for many of us, it never really did. And so what I'm getting for you specifically, Aquarius, is that for some of you, you allow you forced yourself to, maybe that's a little bit harsh, but you allowed yourself to believe in certain things so that you could be accepted by the community or the collective. And that was to a that was at a detriment. That was to your detriment to a certain extent. I won't say that it was completely detrimental, because ultimately you learned something from it, or at least you had the opportunity to learn something from it, to grow from it, to change, to evolve, to expand, whatever. Okay. All right. So again, let's get into some cards here. Then, what was twenty twenty one like for you, Aquarius? What year end message? Yeah, look at that. The first card out is the Page of Wands, with the Page of Swords. Okay. Learning, yeah, learning about a new reality, learning about a new identity, okay? The Page of Wands is definitely a type of energy that uh, represents a, changing, a change in alignment. I often say that the Page of Wands could be representative of like a midlife crisis, but it doesn't have to be as extreme as that. It's just a level of you changing your identity, you changing how it is you approach the world, the message that you have to send 
to the world or that what you want to bring to the collective. With the Page of Wands, you have that with the Page of Swords. Um, and it's interesting because this energy, this this collective energy of, of this big shift in our alignment or what it is we work towards or what it is we're driven towards was coming through as the King of Wands for a lot of the other signs. For you, Aquarius, it's as the Page of Wands. The Page of Wands has come out with the Page of Swords. So what I'm hearing and feeling for this for you, Aquarius, is that over the year of 2021, it was all about learning learning in terms of formulating a new identity, changing your message, okay? Uh, also, learning about what it is you truly dream of, the star. I feel like the year of 2021 really helped you, and Aquarius, this is your energy, by the way. Yeah, the star officially represents you. But, uh, <laughs> so you're showing up in your reading here. But there is has been a level of you getting to a deeper understanding of who it is you truly are or what it is you truly dream of and getting yourself in alignment with that, wrapping up old situations, circumstances, or energies, the world that have held you back from really pursuing this, the star, what it is you truly want. I'm also getting a level of having been connected or formulating, having formulated or have a, a deeper connection with or having healed your connection with your inner child. It's your direct connection to your inner child I'm feeling here that is put literally putting you into in the space to be connected with what it is you truly dream of like on a soul level and this is beyond your egoic alignment and it's the ego that has been the one that's been really going through this the most of the reshaping here right because for so many of us our egos have really ruled our lives in many ways okay at the bottom of the deck here you do have the four of wands which is beautiful Okay, the Four of Wands, you also have underneath that, you have the Three of Pentacles, which was which is in reverse here, and then the Seven of Wands to the Six of Wands to the Page of Pentacles to the Hermit, to the Ace of Cups. Yeah, so what this is saying here, Aquarius, Four of Wands is, is talking about the level of stability, spiritual foundation that you have within yourself that made it apparent to you with the Three of Pentacles, which is right next to that, which is in reverse, you didn't want to work towards the same old things. You didn't want to be the same type of team player. There was a level of not wanting to construct or continue working on constructing whatever it is you've been constructing. And this definitely has something to do with other people around you, right? There has been a level of uh, barriers or um, not blockages, boundaries. There's been a level of boundaries that you've been able to put up here, which has given you a level of victory, Aquarius, Six of Wands, in order for you to start a new path, Page of Pentacles, a new path that is in way more alignment with you, the Ace of Cups and the high, and the Hermit, okay? This is beautiful. You have one last card here that has fallen face down. It's the Two of Swords. But what I'm hearing is the Two of Swords is a past energy. There was definitely a level of denial that you were in in the past that kept you from really seeing clearly. And Aquarius, you're, other than the star in the tarot, you are also represented by the King of Swords, which is a level, which is a, a, a clear, objective mind space, making decisions in terms of the facts, not from a place of emotion. Um, it, but it's almost as if you, up until this year, you've been hiding from that or you've been pushing that away, or you haven't been really willing to look deep down under the surface and see what was going on here. But the Two of Swords energy is something that you've really been able to overcome over the course of this year. Now, I'm not saying that was easy, because what I am what I am feeling here, Aquarius, is that the you kind of went into that kicking and screaming, like the universe really had to push you to do so, which makes sense, because you're a fixed sign. Fixed signs don't like to change fixed signs have a really difficult time with change but because it goes against their nature the nature of a fixed sign is to in essence continue the momentum that was set already right like they're not trying to they're not trying to go any detours they're not trying to slow down they're not trying to speed up nothing like that they're just going at the same pace in the direction that has already been agreed upon or already been started right so when it comes to changing things usually the the fixed signs have or potentially have the most trouble with that so there was a level <laughs> there was a level of you kind of going into this energy or this shift kicking and screaming but 
But regardless as to what, how it happened specifically, what went down and all that stuff, you made it. The change has been made or it's still, it's in the process of being made. Whether the change has been made or not at this moment, whether it's been changed or it's in the process of being changed, that doesn't matter. It just matters that you got through it and you're willing to do this now. You're moving forward with this now. That's beautiful. So now I'm gonna move forward. I'm gonna give this five shuffles and we're gonna look at the year of 2022 for you, yeah? This is one. So, what is the year of 2022 looking like for Aquarius? This is two. This is three. Four. And five. All right, Aquarius. So what is 2022 looking like for you? First card out is the King of Pentacles. That's very good. There's some financial abundance coming to you. Something that you've been working diligently on is going to be paying off or is going to be showing up in your reality, in your existence. But I'm also feeling, just like for many of the other signs in which this exact card came out, the King of Pentacles represents a level of self-mastery, self-sufficiency, being solid in yourself. I am feeling, I, I just heard creative ability is going to be coming forward because of this or is going to be ramping up or amplifying for you. But that's because you have gotten into a greater and more solid state of who you are truly as an individual. I'm feeling a very strong energy of being able to stand on your own, a strong level of self-sufficiency here, okay? Either you're entering into 2022 with this energy or over the course of this coming year, this is what you're going to be developing, okay? Beautiful. What else do we have coming forward for Aquarius for the year of 2022? Okay. Overall energy is the Six of Pentacles. I feel like, I, I definitely feel a level of of you being this individual that's going to be doling things out, um, giving things out to people or uh, regulating finances or balancing the scales for many people. And that's kind of, that's kind of your energy anyway, Aquarian. Okay. Uh, but I just get this strong feeling that you're going to be in control. You're going to be in charge. You might be, you might end up being head of the household or head of a group, head of a community or something like that. Hi, Jinx. There's also a level of um, maybe finances that you'll be able to give out. If you're an investor or you're looking to get into investing or something like that, I feel like you're going to have the space, the energy, and the finances to do that, okay? Uh, let's look here. What else do we have? Wow. This is very interesting, Aquarius. Um, so with this King of Pentacles, you have the King of Swords, which is in reverse, but you have that with the Queen of Wands, the five, which is upright, the Five of Cups, which is in reverse, and then the Three of Swords. Interestingly enough, Aquarius, again, you are represented by the King of Swords here, right? However, um, I don't think this King of Swords in reverse is a bad thing. I actually feel like it's a good thing. Because I feel like you're not really going to be giving any time or attention or energy or focus really to things that you're not trying to be in, align in alignment with. Okay, King of Swords in reverse with the Queen of Wands upright. What's more important to you over the course of 2022 or at least what could be more important to you or what the dominant focus could potentially be for you over the year of 2021, I'm sorry, 2022, is what it is you really want to be in alignment with. What I'm getting with the King of Swords in reverse is that you're not open to suggestions. Like, like the King of Swords represents an objective point of view, uh, a, a level mind, okay, that wants to hear all sides of the story or gain all bits of evidence in order to make their decision ultimately from an objective point of view, right? 
But what I'm getting here for you, Aquarius, is that either there are family members around you or maybe it's this community aspect I was kind of picking up on before. People around you that used to influence you or be able to influence you or be able to affect your decisions by giving you their opinion on the situation, you're not going to be open to that. No information from outside sources because all that really matters here is you or is what it is you are in alignment with, what it is you want to move forward with. You are releasing a level of sorrow, five of cups in reverse, in terms of the of the pain. Okay. However, also what I'm getting with the five of cups in reverse and the three of swords upright is in the past you were stuck in some sort of mourning, some sort of sorrowful place. Uh, maybe feeling sorry for yourself, but a, a lack of, ah, okay, a lack of emotional awareness. Not being able to really handle the emotions of whatever it is you were dealing with, or I feel like there was a level of just being, feeling stuck in a low vibrational, sorrowful place. All having to do with a level of pain, three of swords. But... You're not going to allow yourself to be affected by that any longer, or at least moving forward in the year of 2022. And this is another part of the message that I really want to bring forward for you. I tried to record your reading yesterday, but I got rained out because I wanted to sit out here, right? Um, and what, I, what was coming through in that message was the fact that I feel like many of you over the course of this year finally were able to tap into your emotions. Um, and I don't want you to think that I'm trying to be disrespect, dis disrespectful or like I'm coming for Aquarius like that. The, 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 the fact of the matter is that at your core Aquarius, just like you're a fixed sign and don't really don't necessarily do well with change. You're also an air sign. And as this king of swords here, if you're going to be objective, there can be no emotion involved in whatever it is you're deliberating through or trying to figure out. Right. So Aquarius has this kind of gets a bad reputation for being emotionally detached. Um, but that is a natural and intrinsic part of your energy, Aquarius. If you're going to be honest, objective and fair and dole out what is balanced and just for everybody involved, then you cannot be emotional. You cannot allow your emotions to get be triggered and enter into the situation while you're trying to figure out who gets what, when, where, and why, right? So this emotionally detached energy isn't necessarily bad. But for some of you, I feel like, or I felt like what I was picking up on yesterday was that um, you kind of have been plagued by this. You've been, and maybe, you know, it started out as people coming at you, coming for you, this, that, and the, like six ways, sideways, talking about how emotionally detached you are and how un unfeeling you are and blah, 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 and whoop-de-whoop -whoop and all that bullshit, right? And maybe it started like that and you were just like brushing it off like, yeah, whatever, whatever. But then over the course of your life, as you got older, I want to say, that, be that started to affect you more and more or at least got to get, it became a level of being worse and worse and worse for whatever reason. But that finally broke for some of you out there. That finally broke and you were finally able to get a, get attached, not attached to, but connected with your emotions and maybe how it is you were truly feeling about some things. And so that's why, that's why you're not, you're not being objective here. Instead, you're being subjective. You're being subjective from the point of view of who it is you are and what it is you really want. King of Pentacles, Queen of Wands. And you're rejecting anything that has held you in this sorrowful state. And that's a big part of this reciprocity here. Most of this reciprocity that will be coming forward for you over the course of 2022 would be you being on the receiving end of that. You finding a way to reach your completion page of swords there's the page of swords again to the ten of pentacles the ten of pentacles being your ultimate long-term goal right and then here is the ace of pentacles that starts you on that path to reaching the ten this is all at the bottom of the deck but in order for you to do that you've got to be stay very very clear very conscious very level-headed right 
and stay in alignment with what it is you truly want. Here's the king of wands to that queen of wands. Okay? So all in all, Aquarius, I feel like this is going to be a good year for you. I just heard energetic understanding of your true emotions is going to be a major goal for you over the course of 2022. And no, that's not necessarily going to be easy because emotions are not the easiest things to navigate. The King of Cups did come out in the reading yesterday for you, which was representing a level of emotional understanding and emotional maturity and fortitude to be able to weather any emotional storm that comes raging. You're really going to need to settle into being the eye of the storm. Learn how to do that. You know, develop that strength. Because it is necessary. You can't, you can't really go through, and maybe this was part of why this affected you so much in the past, but you really can't go through life completely emotionless. Because your emotions tell you personally whether you are going in the right direction for yourself or not. Jinxy butt. Right? So if you're not connected to your emotions, then you're not connected to how you're truly feeling and thus... You're allowing yourself or you're leaving yourself open or susceptible to manipulation by others and their feelings. So ultimately, I feel like all in all, this is going to be a good year for you, Aquarius. Okay? Yes, Jinxie. Well, I'm busy. You want to sit in my lap? Well, come on in. Well, you can't see her, but well, you can kind of see her. All right. I'm going to close this out. Get you some oracle guidance here. Yeah? Five shuffles. One. Oh, see, there she goes again. Okay. <laughs> Two. Three. Oh. Three. No, come on now. Three. Four. And five. Alrighty, cool. So let's close this out. Closing Oracle Guidance for my Aquarians to wrap up this year-end review. Closing Oracle Guidance for Aquarius. Jinx is over here chasing things. We have card number 26. Amaru, the beautiful place. Your dreams of a more beautiful world are not a product of childish fantasy nor idle imagination. They are true spiritual visions inspired by the universal heart that yearns for divine paradise to be manifested in all worlds. You have a life purpose to assist in the creation of divine harmony in the world through sacred activism and the expression of your soul talents. Believe that the beautiful world you long for is not only possible, but part of your spiritual responsibility to create. In a reading, this card says, don't be scared to face a problem head on. You don't need to be willful about a solution, but in facing the issues, you shall simplify the complexity and recognize the practical steps that will create healing change. Keep your mind and heart open as you ask for unconditional loving guidance and how you best evoke divine healing in any situation. There is an outcome available to you that is far more beautiful and divinely inspired than what you can currently envision. Ask for divine help and trust unconditionally in the assistance that will lead you away from the limitations of your current thinking into the perfection of what the divine wishes for you and our world. Okay, Aquarius, so there you have it. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. If you guys would like this specific spread for yourself, definitely hit me up. I do have my email address listed in the description box below. Just let me know that you would like this specific spread for yourself, and I will get you all set up. But with that said, I hope you have a great end of the 20, rest of 2021 and an even better 2022 ahead. Yes, I'm sending you all so much love, and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next reading very, very soon. Take care. Mm -hmm.
Bye.